TNTM The Show presents Talking Nerdy. With your hosts, Pablo Gunner, the Ambassador, and Marvin Goof, yo. And we're here to talk nerdy to you, as we have been for the last 13 years talking about comics, video games, movies, shows, all the nerd stuff, because we want to save you the time. We don't want you to waste your time. We want you to put your time into the best of the best. So we're willing to waste our time so you don't have to. So we're going to be covering X-Men 97. We're going to continue our talk about X-Men once again. This is going to be like our part two. If you want to see part one, that was our previous podcast where we talked about X-Men. We're going to be going more in depth in X-Men. So if you're not caught up, spoiler alert, baby, mm. because this one's going to hurt. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> It's another one I haven't been. See, oh I'm my just god! Behind on every yeah, day, yeah so maybe I'm you should gonna... leave. The real one. <laughs> <laughs> but see, I want to know though. I want to know. The third episode, we have the Goblin Queen arc. Yeah. Which we've talked about this. I mean, you and I have talked about this. I've talked about this with other people. Which is, I'm going to say this up front: X Men '97 isn't perfect. But what it's doing is absolutely better than anything else out there like it and it's just absolutely crazy because yeah some of the voice work it's not the same it's not as good uh the animation is slightly different you may not like it i love it i think it's clean and smooth and fresh and i, and I love it i will say the story pacing is a lot faster in this than it was in the previous iteration i mm. think uh, to a certain extent it's too fast yes i agree and uh my my other big issue was with the whole Mojo and the whole Storm thing, why did they split them up when they could have just done an episode for each instead of just half an episode for each? It was such a weird thing choice to do. Well, I think, so, 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 before we jump too far, this is, just like you said, the Madeline Pryor, or, yeah, the Madeline Pryor Goblin Queen, like, that was one episode, and it easily could have been at least three episodes, yeah. easily, because of the way that story goes in the comics. I think what they might have done in the, in that instance is that they went, you know what, a lot of people are going to hate Cyclops because of the way this went in the comics, because that's what they, a lot of people hate Cyclops because of the comics, how that went. Mm. They're like, we're going to do it differently, and I think that's the best that they could deliver on that by going like, let's get people to not hate Cyclops like they did in the comics. Mm. So this is what we're going to do, and that's how, and, they, and it worked, I think, for what they're doing. Now, what you said, the next episode was, you had Jubilee, it's her 18th birthday, and she's like, I just want to have fun and play video games and go to an arcade, and Magneto's like, I'm not doing that, you know, like, <laughs> the new stepdad or whatever, you know, like, oh, I'm not going to lower myself to that, that's stupid, you know, and then they end up getting sucked into this thing that ends up being like a super Nintendo Sega Genesis, which we have back here, mashup. It's a Motendo. Yeah. Which, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. But, I and, but this. then ends up looking like a Sega Genesis. It was so cool. And then the way that it plays, it plays like the X Men arcade game. And then the other games, right? Like the yeah. other game, all they essentially mashed up all the X Men games into. Then that's what the different levels are. And it was so cool. It was cool. Oh my it was god. So so cool. So cool. <laughs> and so what was really cool about that too is that, see, and I didn't know this at first. Uh, I noticed that Jubilee's voice was slightly different, but I was like, I don't have a problem with it. It sounds close enough. The original lady did an interview that I saw, and she said, yeah, they asked me to come back, but I'm a voice acting director now. I'm not a voice actor anymore. I want to give other people opportunity that are up and coming, other people that I think are talent, more talented than me, because that's her job now, right? To look mm -hmm. for people that are talented for these. And she's like, I want to pass the torch, especially because I don't know, I don't, I don't think she's Asian, and I think that was, she didn't specifically say, like, hey, I want it to go to an Asian person, but mm -hmm. she just said, like, hey, I think it should just go somebody that's more befitting the role than me, instead of just sticking with me, and so in that episode, she is the old, she's the old version, and you, so there's this passing of the uh. torch to the next younger generation, and that was a beautiful moment, too, how that happened of, like, hey, we need to grow, we need to move on, we need to grow up, it's not all bad, you know, and stuff like that. But yeah, it's, it is going to be tough, as we know as adults, right? Coming from mm -hmm. that, because this is, was our childhood Indeed. going to now. And it's like, 
Yeah, but now we're trying to make the world a better place. We can do that thing. We can do that as kids, right? And yeah. so... What was so weird about it is they have that going on, and then they keep going back and forth between that and Storm, because Storm had, spoiler alert, lost her powers. Oh, wow, okay. And uh, she was working with Forge to try to get them back. Mm -hmm. And so it kept going between the two stories. So essentially... Only half the episode was Jubilee, and then half the episode was Storm. Right. So, and then that was like episode four, and then episode five was just completely like, completely different and nothing to do with with Storm the, with with the other episodes. That was mm. like probably one of the more like shocking episodes. Huh. Well, it connects more with what they were building with the first yeah. two episodes, and and kind of the third. Um, yeah, but definitely not the fourth. And I think the reason that they did they s did that split is just to make just to make the the points in her comeback stronger, right? Because yeah. if they would if they would have done Storm's story in one episode, you would have been like, oh, she lost her powers, and it's only been a few episodes, and then she got it back already, and like mm -hmm. you know, it's it's not a big deal. But and you then, but when you split it, you go it. Feels like she's had her t her powers lost longer, even though really they weren't. They weren't, and then to make it worse is they're like, okay, well, all this is happening. We'll show you what else is happening. Right. And that's episode mm. five, and then they go back to six. So they did this gimmick to make it look like it was longer. Wow. Than it really than it was. was. But that moment was epic, right? Because yeah, that was. What's crazy is so yeah, Forge and and once again, I feel like the, it did work better. That's straight from the comics too, right? Like that whole relationship with Forge and Storm, yeah. that's straight out of the comics. I think even him trying to get her her powers back and, and their romance, that was part of it. And same thing with that whole owl, like demon spirit thing, that was also part of the comics. So I feel like that translated really well because they split it up. If they would have done it in one episode, it would have been a really strong episode, but it also would have... It wouldn't have felt as powerful and, it, and the way that they placed it. Because like you said, there's episode five and then episode six and then... And then the way, yeah, it's just the way that they played it out. It just wasn't, it, it just wasn't the same, you know? It just felt like the time, right? Like the the distance between it was like, oh, there's been more time. So you felt like she had her powers gone longer than they actually were. And the so it felt like a more emotional you from moment. Feeling that way was the whole Jubilee thing. Right, too, right. Mm -hmm. Jubilee, every time you go back to it, it keeps making you think, oh, not much time has passed. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but... Yeah, that that's that's part of it, and so that was that story arc was really really well done. I was really impressed with that, like from the comics. I was not expecting episode five because I do remember that in the comics. But as far as I remember that in the comics, the decimation of Genosha happens way further in the comics. Yeah. So I I remembered Genosha, and I think I was recollecting like, hey, I don't think this ends well for Genosha, but I don't think they're gonna do this now. And they did it then. Oh. And so I was not ready for that. And I was not ready for... And I don't want to spoil it for you because it is so hardcore. And those that know, know. But who they killed off and who they supposedly killed off. So, my, so emotional. My only mm. turf with who they supposedly killed off. They should have given it more time. Mm. Instead of telling us right away. Oh yeah, he's still around. Huh. Oh, for that for that other character, yes. Yeah. Now the now the other one that I'm pretty sure is dead because and if going they to stay dead. If they would have kept that part out, it would have made you feel like even though you didn't see the body of the other one, mm -hmm. that they were dead because you just saw the first one die, right? And there's no coming back. It would reiterate it and really help surprise people more. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I I agree. I do agree. So, but yeah, that death, dude. So, when I watched the episode, uh I I it was already getting spoiled for me, right? And so, I was like, "Wife, this is priority number 1 for today. We have to watch this." I threw it on. My wife had just woken up. Uh I let her sleep in, and so she watched the episode and she was like, "I was not prepared for that. I just woke up." And I was like, I've been awake. I'm not emotionally prepared for that. So the oh. way that it happened is like, yeah, it's all happy and it was great. And I think the way that it was handled, like that whole episode was handled, you know, with, with the relationship stuff, the romance stuff, was so perfectly handled. The maturity of the character, 
that, that sacrificed himself and everything the way he conducted himself, everything that he said, everything that happened, the whole thing of it was just absolutely so beautiful and brilliant. I was, dude, I was bawling by the end of that episode. I oh, legit wow. was bawling. Like, Shelby, my oldest, she was like, Dad, Dad, what's wrong? What's wrong? Are you okay? And I'm like, oh, oh, what? I'm okay. You know, I was just holding my face like this. No, like, at, to a nah, certain point. he was punching those tears back. He was like, I get was back in, get back in, get back in. <laughs> Essentially, I was, I was sucking them back in. I was like, I think we can make up some of these losses in the third quarter. What was that? What was right? Oh, nothing. As soon as it was over, I stepped behind the buffet where there's the mountain of laundry baskets, and I'm like, you okay, Dad? I'm good. I'm good. I'm okay. I'm fine. Uh, nothing, nothing's wrong. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna throw up. You know, like it was, it was bad, dude. Like I was ugly, crying, sobbing. Oh, wow. it, 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 it's, it's. Oh my god. And then, and and once again, like I hate when they do stuff like this in the middle of a season because I go, tell me how you're gonna top this emotionally. You, I mm. don't know how you can. I don't know how you can, but I feel like there are emo uh, there's emo other emotional moments like this, like the storm getting her powers back. That was so powerful because she, because Forge, you know, he can make anything that his mind can think of, and he can make it, and that's his mutant ability. And he makes this machine to get her powers back, and she's like, "Oh, it didn't work," and he's like, "Oh, well, I'll keep on messing with it." And then all this stuff, bad stuff happens, so he can't really focus on that, and then she has to focus on. S on getting him this cure to save him and then fighting this literal demon but also figurative demon of that it actually did heal her she did get her powers back mm. she just didn't believe in herself enough to believe that she had them back and she was kind of hoping to be human right mm. and so that was so she had to unlock it all over again it was such mm. a beautiful powerful moment and then the next episode was, and what's funny about this is I don't know why people think it's this crazy thing, but they're like, oh, Cyclops up and left him and he's fine and this and that. And I'm like, the dude was dying and they healed him like, you know, and he just hasn't gotten back because he's big. He's busy banging his chick. Um, <laughs> so who hasn't gotten distracted, you know, from their friends and family with, you know, your, your most recent, you know, love interest? You know, so, but yeah, and, and, and that was, that episode was really good. That was a, such a superb episode. And then the rogue one is once again, they have the funeral for that character. Oh, I almost slipped up. But, <laughs> and that was such an emotional, like, once, like, oh my God, it hits you again. And then rogue is in the angry stages and hey, if you follow us, if you know me, you know I love Captain America. I mean, people at work call me Captain America. Mm -hmm. Like, Captain America is my dude. But I will say, it was great seeing Rogue punk Captain America like that because he was totally in the wrong. So, <laughs> it, it, that was great. That whole episode was crazy and intense and awesome. And I love how they did this great thing of, like, building up the X-Men in the first few episodes of almost being like, Oh, they're kind of unbeatable and then they've just slowly been taking down a peg to where like nah you guys are legit like might be on the endangered species list you know what i mean like yeah. it's gonna it's crazy stuff yeah it's nuts and then the person that they brought in like supreme level threat and i'm like this is this is too this is nuts but i also worry that it's it's too much too fast too mm. that they could have spread all this out over more episodes and and more seasons uh, for sure. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see for the finale because I think we do. We have one more hmm. left because I heard that it's going to be a three episode like finale or something like that. I don't know, uh, but I know we at least have. I just wish they would have left Xavier gone for longer. I, I well, I understand why they didn't, but once again, going back to that, if they weren't rushing this, you could have left him dead. Or supposedly dead, even though it's not dead. If you watch the previous season, they say it picks up where it left off. Mm -hmm. It also is confusing because, 
like Cyclops is all upset and they got the death certificate and they're yeah. like, why why are we going through this when we know he's not like the team knows he's not dead. They know but he he's was been taken gone. By... But they know he's gone yeah. and they don't but they don't know that he's not fixed. They don't know that he's no longer on his deathbed. So mm -hmm. they don't so they're still worried about him, right? So that's yeah. still there. So there is kind of like a bait and switch thing going on there. Mm -hmm. Uh but yeah, I, still regardless, I absolutely love it. I think it is for me it's easily my most it's the most important thing for me to to watch mm. right now. Like it's at the top of my list easily. Like wow. I have to watch it because of spoilers for one, but also just because it's so phenomenal. Well, when Invincible was ending, I'm not gonna lie, Invincible was a higher priority for you. Okay. Yeah, because right. Invincible is just very glorious. But X Men '97 is good. Yeah, I, I the absolutely animation love it. is growing on me. I I convinced a guy at work actually because he was like, oh, I don't like it, and then I was like, dude. I kept on just talking to him, talking to him, and he was like, he got caught up, and he was like, dude, I was wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then we cried and held each other because of what we saw in episode five. But, uh, uh, <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, absolute, if that doesn't say it enough, absolute strong must-see, must-stream for me. Yeah, it's a must-see, must-stream. I'm gonna watch it. What else is there? And it say? is for him too. I was just gonna say, I'm, even though he doesn't watch it, I'm, I'm gonna say that it is for him too. So we have our merch that we're sporting. Uh, I have the Fallout stuff, which might be going away off the site after this month because we're going to be reducing our site to only 100 products. So this is probably gonna be going away because this is merch of the month. After that, it's, it might be going away completely. I mean, if you still want it, we'll we'll find a way to get it to you. We can make that happen. But it's not going to be on sale because this is the only time that it's going to be on sale with free shipping. By Grabthar's hammer. What a saving. Uh, which is the... It's the vats and then it says, so you're telling me there's a chance, like from Dumb and Dumber, <laughs> from that meme. Uh, so I love it. And there's all kinds of shirts. This is the tank top and this is a small, which works for me. And then I also have the... X-Men hoodie, uh, which I love, and, and it's so great. It's not too heavy. Um, this is a medium, and uh, it, fits, it fits pretty good. Um, and then, of course, I have, the, I have these Ninja Turtle shorts, and then I got my, um, my Mortal Kombat socks, which I don't even know if we're going to... We're probably going to get rid of a lot, a lot of stuff. Like I said, we have to reduce our store a lot, so it's, it's, a lot of this stuff is going away, but if you want it, hit us up for it. And we'll, I'll even hook people up with codes if they, if they want. Just, discount just message us. But yeah, just message let us. Let us know and we can we can find a way to make it available for you to purchase it. Yeah. It's yeah. not a problem at all. I'm rocking my uh, Talk Nerdy to Me Ninja Turtles shirt. Probably one of our best shirts we have here. Live, laugh, love. Yeah. <laughs> That's just awesome. <laughs> and yes, that is Star Trek font right there. And I adore it. It makes me happy. Yes, so, and we yeah. have other ones. I have, there's another one that says Live Long and Prosper. There's also another one that has the uh, Spock quote that he says to uh, to Kirk when he's dying. Um, so, uh, yeah. But I almost felt like maybe we should have gotten him the, the shirt or be like, you know what, you guys switch shirts. You know, like, because <laughs> this guy's spitting the... But this is the ambassador. That's why he, he has the nerd knowledge. That's why we call him the ambassador. My so, parents are Trekkies. He's so he knows this stuff. So <laughs> that's, yeah, that's how I know my parents are Trekkies. So you just have to know that kind of stuff growing up in a Trekkie household. Mm. So but yeah, uh, and once again, you know, we're gonna do the shout outs. Shout outs always to Atticus as our number one shout out. And then uh, we have Amerame Media as well as others, M M uh, MK Jekyll and Hyde makes uh, comics. They're phenomenal. I love their inspirational posts. And uh, yeah, we have, uh, we have, don't we have another one that? Oh yeah, uh, we're still working on getting a collaboration with them. But the Horror Fiend, I was talking to one of the main guys that runs it. And uh, yeah, they, they're, they do mostly like horror movie type of stuff, and then they're gonna do a nerdy, nerdy uh, channel as well. So it's great to see them joining that. Uh, uh, one of one of the guys that's heading it, he, he used to 
work at a comic book shop, so I think uh, he's going to have a really good perspective on nerdy things. Excellent. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I remember, I see, I feel like I see him at all the cons, too, or I usually see him at the cons, so. Well, for New Mexico Comic Expo, he was head of security. For oh, okay, life. there you go. That's, that's why. There we go, wow. <laughs> so, all right, cool. I did fail to mention, too, that 5% of our profit goes to a charity of the month. We have a different charity of the month for the month, every single month. Uh, for Abril, it is Autism Speaks, and then for... Mayo, it's going to be national, uh, it's the, the, it's NAMI is what it is, but it's, it's mental, because it's Mental Health Awareness Month, mm -hmm. it's related to that, so that's what we're going to be, uh, donating to for next month. So, uh, I believe that's it for us, right? Yeah, that is. Alright, cool. So, talk nerdy to me. Stay nerdy, planet Earth. Keep it real. Keep it nerdy, man. <laughs>